We're going to be having a conversation now with Mtebo Zamnini, taking a look at a number of challenges that are facing South Africa, and we get his views on what is happening. Salbon. Hey, when you take a look at the state of events in South Africa almost every weekend, you hold your breath and you're waiting to hear whether there'll be people who have been killed, uh, you know, wherever they choose to patron, or women who are continually abused in the country, and things just not going right. Um, what is your view? Well, uh, I, I, I think... Um South Africa is a movie. We live in a drama. It's a series. Every day you will be shocked by something new. Uh, we have even forgotten what shocked us two weeks ago. Mm. You know, every day, t next week we would have forgotten about Kahiso and all this because there will be something new. It, it, it is not normal. The, what is happening here has never, it's never been documented before. Nobody has even written about it, even the, 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 the political analysts and the professors. We are a failed state. The sooner we accept that we don't have leaders, there is a leadership vacuum. We have people who are masquerading as leaders when they are not. There is a difference on how you run a country and how you run a spaza shop or your farm. This is a country. A country that has been stripped off of its security, of, of everything, peace and stability. For what? We can't as have a government that seeks to please the world, that seeks to please other forces, not its own. As a mother and as a parent... The day you choose neighbors and children of outside other than yours, your own children will rise against you. Charity begins at home. South Africans are naked. South Africans have been stripped of all their dignity and protection. What you see in Kahiso and, 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 and Krugerstop is the last cry of the people. Mm. They are taking everything upon themselves. It then says that they have realized that they have no protection. They have nothing but themselves. They are putting their bodies on the line because they live with these people. They live with these criminals. Lesotho, by the way, has came out to say these are criminals. All of these people who are in South Africa are criminals. That's what Lesotho says. He says we, we are looking for them. They ran away here for murder and rape and everything else. By the way, Lesotho has the highest uh, murder statistics in Africa. I'll verify that for myself. I can't, I can't um, confirm it, so I'll test that uh, for myself. But when you talk of this leadership vacuum in South Africa, you have at times government ministers standing up to say, well, we're doing something. There's work that is being done in the background. Perhaps it does not translate to ground level. It is the very same people, though, of South Africa that keep voting in uh, the ANC into power. So how do we then shift that uh, not to necessarily suggest that the ANC should be taken out of power, but to fix that leadership vacuum, who then is there for the people? Is it not up to the people themselves? Well, uh, look, we, as, as, as a country, we come from a, 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 a colonization of a special type, but no one has ever dissected that what it means. It doesn't matter who you replace the ANC with. The reason why the ANC is still in power today is because there is no alternative. Who hangs our leaders? Who do they report to? Who writes these policies? Who influences the policies? These policies are not genuine. Your big capital funds people. They send them there to influence the policies and how the country is governed. Our biggest problem is not the ANC. Our biggest problem is the people who are hanging the ANC leaders. Who are the handlers of the ANC? It's white monopoly capital. It's white people. It's your DPS. It's your Anglo America. It's your Anglo Ashante. It's all of these big boys. They are handling our people. It's your open hammers. You are scared of saying these things 
That's why we are not finding the solution here. The big white monopoly capital who are sucking our country dry, who have been sucking it dry during apartheid, they are still sucking it even today. Remember the poverty that we see here. It works for them. It's cheap labor. We are slaves. They strip, they remove that thing, but we remain slaves. We are enslaving themselves. These illegal uh, 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 miners, they are a, a clear indication of the state of the country where they want to, people to work for free because they can uh, uh, do it to you. You go to all these uh, the pump stations, the gas stations, you go to the restaurants, you have all these uh, the, uh, the, uh, foreign people there because they are not paid. Some of them will tell you that they are only paid through when you tip them. That's how they make money. If they are not tipped, they are not paid. That's a gross violation of human rights. But because they are desperate and they are here, they are using them and then the South Africans suffer. Our biggest problem here is the people who have captured our leaders. And, and, and it's not the NC. All these polismolanyana political formation, you will find that they are captured by the same person. That's why there is no dissenting view. You read the police of the DA, it's the same as the one of the ANC. It, it's just, we are in a mess. There's no turning back. We need people. We need leaders who will see leadership position as a calling. We need people who will go there not to accumulate wealth. We need people who will go there to say, I am going there to leave a mark. That's the difference between the current crop of leaders and the then leadership. Those people went there to touch lives. They derive pleasure from touching lives, not from accumulating wealth and, and, and dressing nicely, opulence and extravagancy. That's the difference. I'm not saying leadership must be poor, but I'm saying what must drive them is change, to bring the necessary change to the people. We are still singing about Steve Biko today. Which president are we singing about coming from the, the, into democracy? We are still talking about Sobukwe today. We are still talking about Krizani today. What's the difference between those people? Can you tell me five ministers of Mandela? Can you tell me ten ministers of, 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 of Mbeg? We can't. Because they never touch lives. They went in there for whatever reasons that they went in there to, to grandstand, to, to act as if they are leading. They found a working country with proper infrastructure, with strict ground rules, and they demolished it. It's a shame. I, that confuses me because in, from what you just said, it's like you romanticize, um, you know, um, a, no. apartheid. So no. it's like they also inherited empty coffers, right, at the same time. So uh, in one breath you're saying they found things that were working and they didn't do anything about it. Uh, and so I, I'm kind of confused about that position. Let, let me assist. All the universities that we have, your UCT, your VETS, your UJ, which was Rao, University of Free State, you name them, all the white universities, they are still the best today. And they are still, we are all trying to go there. All the former Bandu universities are ashamed. They are ashamed of themselves. They were, the, Fort Hare was the best university in Africa for black people. All the black leaders in Africa went to Fort Hare. Can you take your child there today? No. None of our leaders went to VETS. None of these people went to UCT. They are products of Ngoye. They are products of, uh, of, 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 of Teflon. They are products of Univet. They are products of Rod for their. They allowed it to collapse under the black government. How do you justify that? Go to VUT today. It's a shame. The infrastructure was there. Apartheid South Africa was extremely oppressive, but the infrastructure was there. You Let's go just to there. Let's just hold it there because we're coming, we're coming back with you. Do stay with us. Plenty more to still to come after the break.
back. I'm joined in studio by Mtebo Zamini. We're talking to him about a number of issues and what he sees going wrong in the country. You've outlined the lack of leadership. You've highlighted all the things that are going wrong, um, especially with the ANC and the leadership that they have shown in the country. You're a member of the ANC, you know, in good standing. And so some of these issues that you are ventilating here with us today, have you taken them to the relevant leadership and what's the kind of conversations that are being had? Well, I am a member of the African National Congress, uh, Lilith Leaf 1112. Um, well, uh, look, I don't know if the ANC still have branches. I don't know whether we still go into these BGMs and PPGMs to talk about the issues that affect the country, or we go there to say who must lead. It has collapsed. The standards have collapsed. We go there to sing. We now elevate people based on who can sing better. We have reached a stage where young people have been reduced to praise singers. Mang Mang is a leader just by them Sminov and they will defend you and defend the indefensible. It has collapsed. But we remain there. We are victims of hope. Because where else can we go? I don't know when last year we went to a branch to discuss documents. When, when last a branch have called a meeting to talk about the serious issues that are affecting the, our country and to dissect where is the country going? You will see ANC, NEC members protesting against the ANC. Then you must know that we are in trouble. When you say you're victims of hope, I kind of find that, um, again, confusing, especially in light of everything that we have said this morning, right? Because to me, you are still enabling this very organization that you criticize of not doing anything for the South African and of not doing anything, you know, and putting South Africans first. So essentially, you are also that person that's not doing anything to put South Africa first. You say you have nowhere to go. You know, young people, you were one of them when you led, you know, Fees Must Fall movement. They showed us, or you showed us, you know, what exactly young people in South Africa are capable of. And so I, I find it difficult to accept that you are a victim of any kind to then still sit here and tell us all the things that are going wrong. But you're saying, I can think I am, I am, I am, I well, uh, I, I, I don't think that uh, we, are, we, we are literally saying there's nothing that we can do. There is hope in the ANC. That's why we are saying we are victims of hope because we feel that we can change it. We can still drive it towards where all the South Africans expect out of it. It is the biggest movement. It is the oldest movement. People believe in it. That's why it is still in power today. But do the people who are in that space now, the real people that South Africa needs, I'm not going to say they are not good or they are good, but when you, just like a soccer team, you will have 50 players, depending on the match or the opposition that you play, we decide who and which system we use. Are these people that we are fielded today a, a, a relevant for what we are experiencing? We are experiencing a situation where there is high crime, high unemployment, just like where everything is just collapsing. You need a leader that will inspire hope, that will bring hope firstly, that will also change the mind. Our biggest problem also is the mind. Apartheid South Africa destroyed the mind of our people. In that, not just it alone, including the ANC, in that they created a dependent society. The ANC created a dependent citizenry. We pay you for being pregnant. We feed your child. You go in and get money in Sasa. We build a house. We want free education. Some want free electricity. Where is the tax going to come from? My daughter is in Japan living with her mother there. She tells me every day at five, everyone wakes up in Japan. You wake up and run. 
You can't wake up and sleep and go stand by the, by the, by the shops there and ask us one rent when you have your hands and arms and your brains are fully functioned. That's where the problem is. We have created a dependent citizenry where people say, hey, hey, Mandela build us a house. That's government man. People must be given jobs. People must de derive pleasure from feeding themselves. Just a final one for the purpose of time. Point well made. Your example of Japan, you can make an example from Rwanda, for instance, um, where once every month, everybody in the country, you come out, you clean the streets. You know, there's a sense of community, there's a sense of oneness. Are the problems in Rwanda? Of course, they are, just like in South Africa. You said that we are a failed state. Not we are on the brink of becoming, but we are a failed state. So I do want to get your position on this, right? Maybe the unity of the continent, especially when you take a look at the fact that there are some people who are leaving South Africa to become economic migrants. There are people who are in South Africa who are economic migrants. And so how do we deal with that issue of I may leave and maybe want to go to Rwanda and become an economic migrant in Rwanda. How do we foster African unity if that is a belief that you hold? All the, all the elements of a failed state are already uh, visible here. All of them. South Africa is now is like a cross, a tri cross, very tri cross. It just needs that spark to catch fire and we lack those leaders to control that fire should it start mandela did in the black on black violence we lack a statesman we lack someone who has authority someone who can speak and people listen we lack a visionary for you to control this country where it is now you need an iron fist because criminals and all other elements have made this their safe heaven. You need an iron fist. When we spoke of patriotism, it is the very same South Africans. When you crack down on criminality, they will call human rights, human rights, human rights on criminals. Criminals are no longer humans. Murderers and rapists no longer qualify to be protected by the Constitution. Because they are no longer humans. But you will have all these NGOs who are deriving pleasure from the collapse of the country, defending that. You can go anywhere in the world. What is happening in Jobek CBD downtown, you can't go there. They take your weave in day broad daylight. They are selling and peeing everywhere. It's smelling. That's yeah, our I New do, York. I, I do go to Joburg, and, and yes, maybe it's rough, but what you're saying is, is extreme. It's and smelling. Someone, I don't know where you have went. No, you can't go to... I go to Yeovil. I go to your, the your, 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 So, you know, you look, your, we can your, talk about your, that your, the whole day, yeah, but yeah. I think the perception that you're creating would be like, because, like, yo, it's so dangerous it out there. Yes, it is dangerous. It's, it's but bad. You've seen someone's weave get snatched? All the time. My niece. She was in the car ah, driving. No, I'm you. telling you. She was driving <laughs> okay, anyway. and, the, and the weave was taken. We have to but go. On, we on we Africa, digress. But on yeah, Africa, on Africa. It is, you, you have all these people. We, I'm a pan-African. We all talk about that one Africa and all that. But it is at the current juncture. It is not possible. Mm. Because the other countries are at zero. They see South Africa as their New York. What are the benefits of the South Africans on the other countries? With that, with that, we have to wrap it. Thank you for coming through this morning and thank you for your thoughts. And